Definitely makes sense to me. What were the objections to the legislation? I think it passed, what, 25 to 5, I would imagine, the Democrats and the, and the Senate voted against it. Uh, what, what were the objections uh, as far as you understand them? Well, uh, one, one of my Democratic colleagues got up and made a big speech about militarizing our schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that we are militarizing uh, our schools. I, I don't understand that argument, but I've heard that argument as well when we're putting in a school resource officer in a school. Now, I've got three kids that all went to public schools. They always had a school resource officer in their schools. They loved their school resource officer. They, they were wonderful. They were part of the community in that school and did wonderful things. Having a sheriff's deputy there. Uh, at this campus does not militarize your school. But that argument was made, uh, the idea that we are, we're just injecting more weapons into the school, um, or in literally an argument was made, which is not true at all, is that, that you know some English teacher who's never even touched a firearm is now going to be asked to carry a weapon in the school, right. which is ridiculous. That's, and, and by the way, I said the superintendent, the, the sheriff, and the, su- uh, the principal all have to agree. And then it is permissive on the individual who chooses to do it, that individual – who says, hey, I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to go through the training. I'm willing to do the psychological evaluation and the background check and the fingerprinting and all that. I'm willing to do that uh, in order to protect our school. Obviously, it's permissive on any teacher or faculty member who might want to do it. And I I don't want to speak for all these folks. And obviously, this touches on the emotion of the moment. I know that many people in the gallery are very emotional on this issue because they were connected to the Covenant School tragedy that happened just over a year ago. At the same time, it feels like there are some in this conversation that either want you to do what they want you to do or nothing. And they don't want to, it, just the way it feels to be, Jack, they, they don't want to hear about alternative solutions to trying to better protect our children. They want some sort of anti-Second Amendment gun legislation passed, and that's my characterization of it, not theirs, obviously, or uh, they don't want to hear about it. And and that's a little bit frustrating to me because it it seems to me there's only – There's only one, I don't want to say side, but there's only one group of people that want to sit down and talk about the balance between constitutional rights, respecting the rights of law-abiding citizens, and doing everything possible to protect our children. Well, I I couldn't agree with you more. And when you look at what we've done, even before the tragedy at Covenant, and it was a horrible circumstance, what we were working on the year or two prior to that in terms of school safety and and making our schools safer, and we've had lengthy conversations about mental health and, and, and getting treatment for people that are in a mental health crisis who might be capable of committing some type of violence, we have done a lot. And you're exactly right. For some people, it's very myopic. It, 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 it's, it's only about depriving law-abiding citizens of their constitutional rights as being the answer. I don't, I don't agree with that. I'm happy to have a respectful conversation with anyone who believes that, and we can agree to disagree. But you hit the nail on the head. There are some people, it's, it's, it's all about depriving law-abiding citizens of their constitutional rights to make our community safer. I don't see that. I think there are a lot of things we can do, and we are doing, and we are committed to keeping our schools and our kids and our communities safe. I know you have to boogie. I know it's a really busy day. Thank you for spending a little bit of time on this particular issue. Obviously, plenty more that we could talk about, but I've allotted my time. So we'll we'll talk to you again about education, scholarships, and, and so much more that's going on in the uh, Tennessee Senate at a future time. But thank you for spending some time with us, Jack. You got it, Matt. Have a great day. Right. Thank you. Uh, take care. There's Jack Johnson, Senate Majority Leader, giving us a rundown as to what exactly went down in the Senate gallery. Look, there are rules of decorum. You don't get to act out. Uh, it seems to me that some individuals that descend upon the gallery think they get to act any way they want, especially those that, God bless you, have been individually touched by some of these issues. Well, haven't they had a example set for them in the House? Well, and you're very wise. That's where I'm going. I mean, they, they, are, they are acting as parrots to what they see in the other body. Justin Jones, part of the reason that you have to act in the manner that Cameron Sexton has acted with Justin and the other Justin and the Glorias and all of those at the Afton Bins of the world, she's kind of a wannabe in this. You have to create strict structure for those people because the people in the gallery are following their lead. And you will have anarchy if you allow it to fester and grow, which is frankly what the Democrats want. They don't want solutions they want attention. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. If Justin Jones was interested in 
solutions. He would come on our radio show and we'd talk about them. Justin Jones stands in front of a microphone. As an example, there are others. And talks, I'll go to your, I'll go to any conservative. I'll talk to conservatives about this. Come talk to me. I'm not going to bite you. Just be honest in your beliefs. Oh, but no. No, because that's not a platform that you have complete and total control over. You can't make a fool of yourself and you will be called on some of your lies. It's 1233 on Super Talk. You know, I remind you, as we talk about Second Amendment rights, gun rights uh, generally, that with those rights come a certain level of responsibility. And I think most of you know that. Most of you understand that you need to responsibly understand how to use your firearm. You need to responsibly protect those in your home or around your home from uh, that firearm. And doing so involves a gun safe. And buying a gun safe involves Nashville's safe house the best in the business i'm so proud to be associated with mark and his team at nashville safe house because i can easily tell you that it's the most gun safes i've ever seen in my life and look i've been in a lot of gun shops i've seen a lot of gun safes i've never seen the numbers that he has on his showroom floor mark believes that he should have the thing that you need you shouldn't have to wait for it he shouldn't have to order it and so he has so many inside these brand new safes uh, now he has some he he has some secondary safes he has some resale safes he has some scratch and dent obviously uh, for a baller on a budget, he's got your safe at Nashville Safe House. But he's got, like, in some cases, up to 600, like 200 plus on the showroom floor, another warehouse full of them. And he can deliver one to you today with his professional Cracker Jack team of professional delivery men. No, no fly by night third parties there. Go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com to see the difference. NashvilleSafeHouse.com. Incredible rebates still going on this spring uh, and incredible deals. And Gun safes are always sales tax free at Nashville Safe House, NashvilleSafeHouse.com or Fourth Avenue South in Nashville.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN 12:38. Matt Murphy and you, Libertarian Lunchtime Hour ongoing. Joe Biden's holding a press conference with Fumio Kushida. Am I saying that properly? That doesn't sound like English to me. Sounds close. That's a joke. He, he's the Japanese prime minister. Fumio Kushida. And I bet you that Fumio Kushida is making more sense in English than Joe Biden. It is his first, um, he was about an hour late. You know what? Pop that up for just a I mean, why Based not? on the rule of law that underpins uh, the peace, stability, and prosperity of the international community Joe Biden and sounds great. the guiding uh, principles. With our partnership, we will defend uh, the future of Japan and the United States, the Indo-Pacific, and the world, and make okay, that'll drive that me crazy. future all the oh, more prosperous. He's, uh, he's handing off to Joe. Handing now off I'll to take Joe. Your questions. Oh. Jordan Fabian of Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. Pre, pre, pre done. Bloomberg, let's ask. Go. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last month, uh, you predicted the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates thanks to falling inflation. Uh oh. Uh, but today, data <laughs> showed that inflation rose more than expected for the third straight month. So, how concerned are you about the fight against inflation? Dynamics. And do you stand by your prediction for a rate cut? Well, I do stand by my prediction that before the year is out to be a rate cut. This may delay it a month or so. I'm not sure of that. I don't, we don't know what the Fed is going to do for certain. But look, we dramatically reduced inflation from 9% down to close to 3%. That's a, that's a percentage a of growth, you jerk. We're better situated than, than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing. And we have a plan to deal with it, whereas the opposition, my opposition, talks about two things. They just want to cut taxes for the wealthy and uh, raise taxes on other people. And so I think <laughs> they have no plan. Our plan is one I think is still sustainable. It does so. Uh, that's not. Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, you've said that the uh, Pond well. Steel acquisition okay, we, uh, we have to, Steel is a private I wanna I want to hear the Biden question. Did questions. you discuss the matter today with President Biden? And do you believe that politics are influencing President How Biden's many decision to Three? oppose the deal? And Maybe. I wouldn't mind, Mr. President, Maybe. if you answer that one, too. Okay. Oh, he tried to get a Joe one in there. Hi. On the issue that you have raised, we understand that discussions are underway between the parties. We hope these discussions will unfold in directions that would be positive for both sides. Japan believes that appropriate procedures based on law is being implemented by the U.S. government. Okay, while they're Japan asking this question, while he's answering this question, I want to give a little bit of analysis. So Joe Biden got some bad news. Uh, inflation continues uh, to be a problem. Uh, they will not cut interest rates while inflation continues to be a problem. Inflation is a problem because the Biden administration continues to spend money that we don't have. No, 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 no. Inflation was already skyrocketing when he got in office. Huh. I wonder what was going on then. Oh, wait, here's Joe. Here's Joe. Man of my word, I'm going to keep it. And with regard to that, I stand by our commitment to our alliance. This is uh, exactly what we're doing, a strong alliance as well. He's reading. Okay, here comes uh, maybe another one. Uh, Joe looks confused. Prime Minister's microphone, please. Uh -oh. Nakakuki of Kyodo News. My question is to both Prime Minister Kishida and President Biden. At the summit, you confirmed your strong objections against unilateral attempts to change status quo by force or coercion by China and agreed on reinforcing response capabilities. Under current circumstances, should Japan and the United States bolster defense capabilities? Right, it's driving China me crazy. Pull this down real quick, Bell. Real. And when Joe starts answering, it's a question about China and Taiwan. And when Joe starts why, answering... Why, I, why, do, why does it matter to you? Because they're both basically... You don't understand Jap uh, Japanese, so it's gibberish. You can't understand Joe it's because true. it's gibberish. It's, it's all true. gibberish. Okay, you, Bell, you're right. Pull him up. Pull him up. You're right. We confirmed... 
that the United States and Japan will resolutely defend and bolster a free and open international order based on the rule of law, and that Japan and the United States as global partners shall work together for that purpose. On challenges concerning China, including the point you raised on objecting to unilateral attempts to change status quo by force or coercion, we concurred that Japan and the United States as global partners shall work in close coordination. 5411 wants to know which one's also, Joe. As I said previously, the one with the sunglasses. we will continue our dialogue with China and we will cooperate with China in tackling common challenges. And the President and I confirmed the importance of such dialogue as well. Hey. Based on the solid Oh, sorry. Trust Mr. Well, Minister. our ally, the United States. We will continue to call on China to fulfill its responsibilities as a major power. Japan's policy which I have considered is Send your comprehensively to Bell the mutual strategic relationship we have with China and establish a constructive <laughs> and stable Japan-China relationship through efforts by both sides. That has been my consistent position that I have upheld. We will continue to seek close communication with China at all levels. That's it for me. That's it for me. First of all, we keep improving our lines of communication with one another. That's the United States and China. We, I met, I've recently spoken at length with President Xi, and we've agreed that we would, number one, have personal contact with one another whenever we wanted to discuss anything, so there'd be no, nothing lipped as, no, no, nothing slips, as they say, between the cup and the lip, so we know exactly what the other team is thinking, number one. And uh, so we had a long discussion last, uh, almost, I guess almost two weeks ago now. And uh, the best way to reduce the chances of miscalculation and misunderstanding, that's number one. Number two, in our alliance we have with Japan is a purely defensive in nature. It's a defensive alliance. That bird's got more guns than any reporter in the Rose Garden. And the things we discussed today in terms of our and our and are purely about defense and readiness. It's not aimed at any one nation or a threat BS, to the region. Man. And it, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with conflict. And uh, so this is about restoring stability in the region. And I think we have a chance of doing that. OK. Oh, we got the bird translation sure. in. You're a liar. Sure, You're a liar, Joe. Who do I call on next? Hang on a second. I got my list here. Uh, he can't even find his list. Hang on. I apologize. Yeah, you should. You should the apologize. Of AFP. AFP. Thank you. My first question would go to both of you, Mr. President and Mr. Prime Minister. Is there a path for Japan to become a full member of AUKUS? And I would have a second question for you, Mr. President. You're now saying that Benjamin Netanyahu is making a mistake in Gaza. What are you willing to do to make him change his strategy? And would you consider conditioning military aid to Israel? Thank you. Easy. Oh, he's going to let the bird answer. Thank you. Your question about AUKUS, I will uh, respond. Our uh, country, we want to contribute to the peace and stability of the region, and therefore we have consistently supported AUKUS. Having said that, the participants of AUKUS, US, UK, Australia, with such countries by bilateral relationship or on multilateral occasions, we have established various relationships. But for Japan to have a direct cooperation with AUKUS, nothing 
has been decided at this moment. Going forward with US, UK, or with Australia, with such countries in bilateral or multilateral frameworks, we will continue our cooperation. So that will continue to be considered. At the moment, about the relationship between Japan and AUKUS, that's it. With regard to uh, my discussions with uh, Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, as well as our relationship with Israel, I have been very blunt and straightforward with the Prime Minister, as well as his War Cabinet, as well as the Cabinet. And uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, Bibi and I had a long discussion. He agreed to do several things that related to, number one, getting more aid, both food and medicine, into Gaza and reducing significantly the attempts, the civilian casualties in any action taken in the region. And thus far, and, we, and it's tied to the hostages, there are a number of hostages that are being held uh, by, uh, by the uh, uh, Hamas. And uh, just yesterday, we're meeting with the Vice President, our National Security Advisor, before that. And, they, and there are American hostages as well. And they know how committed we are, the whole team, to getting their loved ones home. We're not going to stop until we do. The new proposal on the table, uh, Bill Burns led the effort to, uh, for us. We're grateful for his work. There's a now up to Hamas. They need to move on the proposal that's been made. And as I said, uh, we'll get these hostages home where they belong, but also bring back a six-week ceasefire that we need now. And the fact is that we're... Uh, they're getting in somewhere in the last three days over 100 trucks. It's not enough, but need to be more. And there's one more opening that has to take place in the north. So we'll see what he does in terms of meeting the commitments he made to me. Turn him down for a second. All right, I, we're going to have to take a break for a moment. If, if they ask him another question, and I want it because I want to see what a fool he makes of himself. Here's the thing. He can talk tough all he wants because he's afraid of Muslim votes in America. He's afraid of Dearborn, Michigan, which has descended into a hellscape. You want to talk about a, a religious toxicity, go up to Michigan and look at the religious toxicity that exists up there with some suggesting that they should resort to complete and total Sharia law. That said, he's so afraid of Michigan. He's so afraid of Muslims staying home. He's turned his back on the Jewish people, and he's turned his back on the nation of Israel. And, he, and for what? Hamas turned him down. Hamas. Turned him down. Hamas rejected today Joe Biden's plan for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. Hamas, not Israel. Hamas, don't worry. Israel's defending itself. Who was attacked? Who was attacked? Who was attacked? Well, the Palestinians have been attacked, Mathis. Shut up. Who was attacked? Negotiators from the United States of America, Israel, Qatar, and Egypt were discussing a plan to halt the war in Gaza for six weeks to facilitate the exchange of 900 prisoners held in Israel for 40 hostages Hamas continues to hold in captivity, according to the Wall Street Journal. Hamas is demanding more, saying that they demand a permanent end to the war in Gaza and that Israel's full withdrawal from the area in exchange for the remaining hostages captured during the slaughter that occurred on October 7th. That started the whole thing. When's the mainstream media going to be honest about this? When are they going to tell the American people it's Hamas that could stop this today? Whatever Palestinian innocents there are, and there aren't a lot of them, by the way. Did you know, for example, 91% of the Palestinian people support Hamas? 91%. 74% of the Palestinian people say that October 7th was justified. 74%. Let's be real about this, people. These are not friendly allies to the American cause, to freedom, and the Jewish people. Good gracious. So... He slams Israel, slams Benji Netanyahu, our best friend in the Middle East. We don't need to give them money and we don't need to give them arms. We need to give them support. We need to be there and have their back as a nation. And he's turned his back on them because of the vote, because he's afraid, because of fear. Get me up on my soapbox. Hamas demanding.
Hamas operates in the shadows, in the tunnels underneath the Palestinian people. They put the Palestinian people in the position that they're in. They make it next to impossible for the Israeli people to find Hamas and kill them without killing Palestinian innocents. The Israelis bend over backwards, and they're sick of it, and I don't blame them. It's 12.53 on Super Talk. Hello, it's Matt Murphy, and it's time to talk about your health. I know it's a sensitive topic, and, you know, you and I might not know each other, but are you as healthy as you could be? Do you have the right health insurance? Do you know if you have the right health insurance? Well, if you don't know, I know who does know whether or not you do. And that's Pat Davis, yourhealthplanman.com. Your health plan man can help you navigate the very confusing insurance companies and the programs that they offer. He knows all of them backwards and forwards like the back of his hand. He has all of them at his fingertips. He does not shop just one or two. He shops them all. And Pat Davis can help facilitate a better deal for you, a more positive deal for you, and he can get you the insurance coverage that you know and deserve. 30 to 60% less than even Obamacare in some cases. Yes, that could be yours. That's called their Freedom of Choice plan. Find out more by contacting Pat Davis today. Call them at 855-4-PLAN-MAN, 855-4-PLAN-MAN. That's 855-4-PLAN-MAN or go to yourhealthplanman.com. That's yourhealthplanman.com. They'll design a plan that's managed by you, not by the government. It's yourhealthplanman.com.
Hey, friends, Matt Murphy for Jeff Eddy and Efficient Heating and Cooling. It's that time of year, friends, where you need to get that AC checked out if you've not done so already. Let's schedule that appointment. Why is it important? Well, one, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Jeff Eddy says $125 is the max that he'll charge for any residential maintenance call, no matter how many units you have. Does not matter, no matter how many units that you have. Now, why is that important? Because you're going to extend the life of that AC unit by making sure that it's running properly, making sure that it's maintenance properly. You do so with your car. You know, you go to the dentist to get your teeth checked out every six months or so. Why in the world wouldn't you do it with your AC? It just makes sense. Now, a lot of times when it's time, uh, the unit may be getting a little bit old. Some guys are going to re uh, replace, replace, replace. That's all they recommend. Not so with Jeff Eddy. Now, he'll tell you if it's time, and they're a diamond contractor with Mitsubishi Electric and a Leap Pro partner with Ream. They're ready to go when it's time to replace, but you can trust when Jeff Eddy tells you it's time, it's time. 615-784-4424. 615-784-4424 or efficienthvac.net. Call today. Tell them Matt Murphy sent you to the one and only Efficient Heating and Cooling. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Matt Murphy and you. Hour number two starts right now. It's 106. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Communication abundant on the Members Nutrition Super Text Line. 615-737-9986. Several of you holding on the line to discuss the possibility of giving schools every tool, every ability to protect our students. Uh, what is known as the uh, the teacher's guns legislation has been discussed. We talked about activities on in the Senate um, yesterday with Jack Johnson, Senate Majority Leader, in the first hour. And now we talk uh, with a gentleman I've never had the opportunity to speak with, Representative Ryan Williams out of uh, Cookville. Uh, he is a Republican, District Number 42. He is uh, chair of the Appropriations Subcommittee, and he is the bill sponsor of the legislation that would allow for, under certain circumstances, teachers or staff members to be armed in our public schools and mr williams joins us today on the matt murphy show representative good afternoon good to speak with you good afternoon great to speak with you for the first time thanks for having me on well it's absolutely a pleasure to uh do so let's uh let's start with this uh very emotional uh bill regarding teachers and and, and guns in our school systems I mean, obviously, a lot of emotion uh, spilling over in the Senate yesterday. I understand that emotion, uh, but I also understand that uh, we have to give every tool to our public education systems available to us to help protect our youngsters in those school systems. Walk us through uh, your decision to sponsor the legislation and how good do you feel about it in the House? Well, as you, as you know, last year, the Senate closed the judiciary early, and so uh, it wasn't able to be heard in the Senate, but the House acted on this bill last year, and because the judiciary was closed, I laid the bill on the desk. So it currently sits on okay. the desk in the House floor, and the the bill in its current form is very similar to two minor technical changes between the Senate version and the House version. Uh, and so he'll be sending it over on message, and we expect to take the bill up later. The bill originated from the ideas that came out of the Parkland shooting uh, Stoneman Douglas uh, school shooting from years ago. And, of course, I was here in the legislature when we ca uh, passed campus carry for higher education campuses across the state. And the TBI college campus report showed an overall reduction of more than 20% in every category of crime across our institutions of higher learning after passage of that bill. This bill seeks to do similarly what happened in campus carry. However, it has five uh, very important ingredients as it relates to how it's done so that uh, there's a higher level or a higher standard of care as it relates to security of our students and faculty that are there. But ultimately, the idea came from the peace officer idea that came out of that committee uh, some 18 months after uh, the shooting in Florida. And so what makes this bill a little bit different than the original bill that I had several years ago, it allows for uh, 40 hours of training for an individual who choose to volunteer to do this, a mental health background check, an enhanced carry permit, uh, fingerprint identification, 
and then the approval of the local law enforcement agency who has the MOU of understanding with that local school system. So the bar is very high. In college campuses across the state, about 3.13% of faculty and staff carry on campuses today with no incidents in more than five years. This bill seeks to mirror that, except the standard is much higher. I expect a, a very low number, most of which would be in rural districts where hiring SROs or law enforcement agents in order to do this, uh, because as you know, we funded an SRO in every school in Tennessee last year, or year before last, and what we found that even, there's still more than 400 schools across the state that don't have an SRO has, happens to do with their ability to find law enforcement agents what this would do was create this unbelievable standard that law enforcement agencies have worked with me to help uh, modify so that we can protect students and also, more importantly, create what I think is the most important part of this legislation, and that is a deterrent. Um, as, as you may not know, the reason why this bill is so important is that it allows every school system in the state to put a sign in front of the school that says under Tennessee code annotated, there may be someone in this in this school that's carrying uh, a weapon for uh, that is trained uh, and passed the mental ba mental health background check, and the law enforcement agency knows about, therefore creating a deterrent in and of itself. As you know, in most active shooter situations in schools, the first person that is addressed by the active shooter is usually the SRO, which is typically uh, in only 60% of our schools, one individual. Uh, Representative Ryan Williams is with us discussing legislation in front of the House of Representatives that would give uh, teachers or other staff members the ability under certain circumstances, as he just drew out, uh, to arm themselves to help protect their students. Uh, you know, I, two aspects of this. One, I, I've talked to some of my friends within law enforcement. I've spoken to some of my friends in security consultation services and and they say that it would be a it's a tricky thing uh, to keep the secret nature of the individual teachers that are armed as the rubber meets the road. Is that any part of your discussion? And I, and I know opponents of the bill are s seemingly angry about the fact that there would be no parental notification. It seems to me that that's an important component of this. You just kind of address that, Ryan. That uh, it's important that we don't announce or flag necessarily those staff members, faculty members, or teachers uh, that have been properly trained and are concealed carrying uh, because that would put a target on their back. That is correct. Also, I think one of the things that sometimes get, gets lost in this, which is different than the higher education campus carry, is that the, the law enforcement agency who has that memo of understanding has folded these people into their active shooter plans as it relates to what happens. And so, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, when you read of what happened in these other school shootings, you know, there just wasn't an opportunity. Sometimes students get trapped and can't get out of the school, and this would give them, uh, give that person uh, the opportunity to communicate with law enforcement and assist in protecting kids. These people, it's not the intent of any law enforcement agency that uh, that I have talked to that would say that they would encourage or even uh, train someone to um, – uh, confront the shooter. It's mainly about protecting kids who who may or may not be trapped. Uh, Representative, I would expect, considering activity as it went in the Senate, I know the House has a different uh, body, and obviously with a different uh, membership, uh, do you expect any trouble uh, seeing this to the floor and seeing it passed and getting to the governor's desk? Well, always there are 99 members. It's uh, we go into the House chamber with you know knowing that there's going to be a challenge as it relates to the votes. I think uh, as it relates to uh, whether or not the bill, I'm I'm comfortable. I wouldn't lift it from the desk to have a vote on it if I didn't feel like that we had the the support to do that. I think we do have the support to do that. I think when I talk to particularly my members in rural areas across the state, it's it's something that they are drastically needing, and those in urban areas who who wish to have the ability to create a deterrent as you know deterrents are probably one of the most invaluable things that we have as it relates to these situations i think it's really important i just realized however i didn't answer your question about uh the the individuals previously and i think i'd like to address that the the memo of understanding under the current tenant the the reason why the dean or the president of universities were not notified is because 
those people who chose to carry, we didn't want it to become an issue of hiring and firing employees because they were willing to volunteer to do this and to go through the rigorous training in order to do so. And that that applies here. It's not that the students wouldn't be notified. The principal and the director of schools would be notified uh, as under the current tenets of the bill. So it's not that they w- would not be known, but the, the law enforcement agency would know and the principal of the school in which someone would uh, would be there would know. I, they, their identity would be preserved in that way, but there would be the acknowledgement that there would be somebody and that they have been act, trained in active shooter training and have their training folded into what the plan is. Has this at all over, over your years as a representative um, in the General Assembly, has it been a frustrating process? Because it feels to me, and obviously we're all sensitive to those uh, individuals and groups that have been directly affected by gun violence. And the most prominent one of late was the tragedy uh, that happened at Covenant School. But it, it feels like we all come to the table of discussion and everyone agrees that we want to do everything within our abilities from a constitutional perspective, obviously, to protect our children. And then when folks like you, Representative, or Matt Murphy or whomever, bring up things that don't have to do with restricting gun rights, the other side just starts screaming and, and they don't want to talk about it. That it, it feels like there are groups that, unless you're talking about restricting gun rights, they don't want to have any of these discussions. It's a bit frustrating for us on our side of it. Does it ever frustrate you? Of course it's frustrating, uh, particularly in, in legislating things that are very sensitive like this. I've had an opportunity to talk to uh, some of the covenant parents. I've gotten emails from some of the covenant parents. Uh, that was a, a tragedy. I have relationships with a lot of those in Tennessee Voices, and they are uh, seem to be reasonable, reasonable people. They, I've, every person that I've been able to sit down and talk with about the tenets of the bill are much more comfortable after communicating with me individually about it. I think sometimes the most frustrating part is the speak or the dialogue about something that's simply not, not factual. And so a lot of times you're having to undo someone's preconceived notions about a bill or an idea or a theory uh, and never really get to the opportunity to discuss what the actual bill does. And I think that's always been a challenge in legislating, particularly in any sensitive matter. Uh, Representative, while we have you on the line, I'm, I'm curious your thought. I mean, the biggest uh, piece of legislation before the General Assembly is clearly the education scholarship bill. Um, uh, we understand that there remain differences between the Senate version and the House version as as much as you know uh, where are we concerning those conversations, and and how hopeful are you uh, to expect that this will come to the House floor for a vote? Well, that's a I, the one thing that I've never got when I got my orientation here in the House floor was a crystal ball or a magic <laughs> wand. And unfortunately, that's fair. Unfor- unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I, I I I've been I have not been as actively involved in the education scholarship because it's not in any of the committees that are before me. And sure. so I, I know I know that the House and Senate are in two uh, diametrically different positions than they currently are. I know that there's a lot of work ahead. Uh, as I originally talked to the administration about the bill, I felt like that they would get a better understanding or a better realization of the tenets of the bill if they were in two separate bills. I think if that were the case, you'd end up with one for sure, maybe both. But the challenge is the how and not the what as much. Representative, a good opening conversation. I look forward to the next one. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us talking primarily about the uh, uh, the bill before the House or soon to be before the House regarding uh, arming our teachers to protect our children. We appreciate that, and we'll talk to you again very soon. All right. Look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, take care. There's uh, Representative Ryan Williams joining us. He's out of Cookville. He is also the chair of the Appropriations Sub and a, um, obviously a member of the House of Representatives in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we'll take a few of your telephone calls coming up in just a moment. Look, actors, and by actors, I mean in interested parties in the conversation regarding our school systems will say that they want to do everything in our power to protect children. Obviously, everything in our power isn't possible in as much as we believe in the rule of law and we cannot violate the rights of one to attempt to protect the rights of another. That's not the way we operate. In a freedom-loving society, and I would like to believe that we still are, 
we have to balance security against freedom. Always recognizing that if you achieve 100% security, you're going to lose freedom. And so those that believe in individual liberty and freedom of association, freedom of movement, and these types of things guaranteed by our creator and certified by the Constitution of the United States, those of us who believe in those tenets recognize that we have to be right 100% of the time and the bad guys only have to be right once. That said, I'm sad to report I don't believe that we're dealing with honest people. If they tell me they're willing to listen to anything that can protect children, everything that can protect children, then why are you not listening to this legislation? Why are you not considering this legislation? Why are you dismissing this hat in hand? Why are you acting as performance artists in front of television cameras, which I'm told was happening yesterday? I mean, I'm sad to report it, but I was told by eyewitnesses in the Tennessee Capitol that you had individuals on against the Senate legislation that were, I'm trying to be delicate here, that were prepping themselves to go on camera. In other words, making sure that they were presenting themselves in the appropriate emotional space to go on camera. You want me to put it down there where the goats can graze on it? They were cry prepping. This was an eyewitness to the event that told me of this. They were cry prepping. Because they're not, well, I don't want to, I don't want to suppose I know what they are or are not bringing to the table. I would say this, that anyone that opens with, I'm willing to talk about anything and then shuts this down without fully explaining exactly why. I don't believe you're an honest actor. 615-737-9986. If you'd like to comment on it, 615-737-WWT. And it's the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. If you wanted to get in, a couple of open lines now. 615-737-9986. 615-737-WWTN to discuss either uh, gun legislation in front of the Tennessee General Assembly uh, giving the state of Tennessee an ability to identify and allow for teachers to be armed in public education settings in uh, in K-12 through education. The state Senate passed the legislation that would allow some teachers to be armed on public school property. Gallery had to be cleared. The legislation is pretty comprehensive. The bill has a pretty good likelihood of passing the House of Representatives. They must possess a valid handgun carry permit, must be fingerprinted by the appropriate law enforcement agency, must pass a psychological evaluation, must have written authorization of the chief of the appropriate law enforcement agency, must complete at least 40 hours of training specific to school policing that has been approved by the Peace Officers Standards and Training Commission. Several of you asking who would pay for this. Uh, The short answer is I don't know. The longer answer is I would think you could figure out a funding mechanism similar to the SRO funding mechanism provided by the state of Tennessee. After all, we're all in favor of the same thing here, right? Protecting our students. Apparently not. Several people, including a group of Covenant School mothers, took to the Capitol yesterday to protest the bill. As Democrats and Republicans went back and forth over it. London Lamar, senator from Memphis, said it's irresponsible. The public school teachers don't even want this bill. They're not even asking you for this, he said. Some of the protesters in the gallery broke out into chants of shame on you, shame on you, despite repeated warnings from Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally. One covenant mother, after the bill was passed, said McNally was going to let the group of mothers remain in the gallery after they begged to stay, but the group felt it was wrong for them to stay. After everyone else had been kicked out, another coveted mother told News 2, this is something we've worked hard on, and so I didn't want to be kicked out of something. I wanted to watch the vote. I wanted to be there to experience it. To have the gallery cleared was really upsetting. Well, unfortunately, that's because of the actions of a few within the gallery who could not comport themselves in a manner consistent with the decorum expected in the body. The uh, the objections also came from the likes of individuals like Jason Sparks, who was, according to WKRN, a gun violence survivor who argued that it would make schools less safe. Measures that make our schools more like military bases with signs that guns are inside do not create a nurturing and trusting environment that is conducive to learning. We know that arming our teachers does not make our students safer. We, do we? Do, do we know that? I don't know that. Why, why, are you, why are you speaking for me? In fact, he said, it increases the chances that a teacher's gun will fall into the wrong hands. I also don't know that. Henry is next up on the show. Hey, Henry, how are you? Fine. Welcome to Nashville, belatedly. Thank you, brother. I've seen it quite a bit. Thank you. I'm reading the book Hamilton now, and in chapter uh, third, page 603, it's called Gusts of. Let me write it down. I get nervous being on the radio. Uh, Gusts of Passion, and it's about Adams vacating Washington, running away to Quincy, Massachusetts, just when yellow fever hit, and there was many consternation. Wait, is this the? Uh, is field. this the? Is this the Chernow book? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. And I've been reading it for many weeks, many, many weeks. But it's the same old thing now that we had 200 years ago. Somebody else is representing Biden just like someone else was representing Adams. Hamilton was a vital, important person in our development of our country. But when Yellow Fever took over, John Adams ran away to Quincy and hit out. You know, it's just the same old thing we've had for years and years and years. Um I sent you a text uh, email about it. But okay. We're just enjoying the state. We're experiencing the same thing as years ago. Other people speaking. Yeah, you world. know, you know, a lot of people want to suggest it. And great call, Henry. Don't don't make your first call the last. Thank you for the kind words. And uh, it's a great book. 
Um, I have it on my shelf in my study as well. Alexander Hamilton was a great American. He was gone too soon. It's um, unfortunate what happened between him and Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. Anybody? Anybody? Got milk? Anybody? No. Um, you are right in your overall point. There is not a lot politically new under the sun. We like to pretend that we live in unprecedented times, and in some ways we do, because there's never been a time like 2024. Obviously, 2024 is unique into itself. However, politics has always been a nasty business. Politics has always been the ultimate blood sport. It has always been kill or be killed. And the media has never been fair, ever, ever. Nor was it necessarily designed to be fair. 31 after the hour, more on, well, Teresa has a solution to the world. It says on my screen, line two, Teresa fixing the world. Tony in Smyrna, I want to talk with you. You'll be first up next. Rich and Lindsay will get to you as well as we continue on the Murphy Show on Super Talk. Friends, Craft Body Scan wants to talk with you. They want to see you, and so much so that they've created a dynamic deal that I am proud to tell you about. Hey, it's Matt Murphy for Craft Body Scan. I went over to Craft for their grand opening some months ago. What a gorgeous facility right in the middle of, uh, of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, they have a beautiful state-of-the-art facility with their incredible CT scan technology, and here's what that means for you. When you call and make an appointment, you'll go to that facility. You'll sit down with these qualified techs. Uh, you'll talk to them. Uh, they'll get to know you from a health perspective. You'll get to know them. And then you'll get in for your scan. It takes five to eight minutes. It's non-intrusive. Uh, you don't have to take your clothes off or anything like that. And for $149, you and a loved one, you and a spouse, you and a brother or a sister, you and someone that needs this in their life can get scanned for your heart and your lungs. Now, they do full body scans as well. They do, they do colon scans. They do a lot of different things with CT technology, which is just incredible when you consider the ability we have to look inside of the human body with ever, without ever having to go inside of the human body. And they do it at Craft Body Scan. Preventative, it's so important. Just do this for yourself. Do this for your family. Make sure your heart's okay. Your lungs are okay with Craft Body Scan. $149. It's a $1,300 plus value each available to you. Craft, spell it with a C, craftbodyscan.com or 615-436-1000. 436-1000 for Craft Body Scan.
I'm such a bozo. I mean, that's just a standard comment, but hello, bozo here. Matt Murphy Show, Super Talk 99.7 WT, and here's why I feel like a bozo. Instead of going to the bathroom during that brief advertisement timeout, I'm watching clips of Hillary Clinton, which makes me want to spew out of another orifice, but she was on Jimmy Fallon recently. I wanted to find the clip for you. I did not watch it live, obviously. I don't watch The Tonight Show. But it's beginning to look more and more and more like 2016, except this time they see it coming. And I predict to you, by they, I mean the Democrats, and by 2016, I mean the presidential election. They never saw it coming last time. They laughed it off. Hillary Clinton never bothered to go to Wisconsin. Can you imagine? She never bothered to step foot in Wisconsin and got her butt kicked there. But now she's back in front of Jimmy Fallon, basically calling the half of the American people deplorables again. Remember, basket of deplorables. Remember that? All right, more on that coming up in a moment. Just get over it. You know what she did? She said that uh, Jimmy Fallon asked her a perfectly legitimate question regarding some Americans who didn't like either choice for president of the United States. And her response is typical elitist, leftist, Democrat, socialist Hillary Clinton. I'll tell you what it was in just a moment. I'll find it. I'll play it for you live. You'll have to hear her screeching. In the meantime, Tony has a thought about school security in the state of Tennessee. Hello, Tony. How are you? Hey, how you doing? I don't know if I can follow Hillary and Cards for Kids. I, this is my big showbiz break, and it, I, it's already blown. one eight. You know, I don't know why everybody <laughs> hates Cars for Kids so much. I kind of like it. I Well, yeah, it was cute the first four or five times, but, you know, and I, then they, they dress it up with this, with this guy who clearly can play a Les Paul. Uh, it, it's a lot more musical, but it's still, you know. Tony, I thought, I thought you were. It's kind of like the, the dogs doing the 12, 12 Days of Christmas. I thought you were going to say that uh, the Cars for Kids commercial was, it was okay the first four or five you know, hundred times. Million. <laughs> uh, I know you've you you you've got a gig sheet there. I, hey, we got to eat, I, man. Uh, you know thing. what? Talk show host got to eat too, Tony. Yeah, I got you there. <laughs> got you there. No doubt. Hey, listen. Uh, I've been listening to these guys saying, you know, it 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 turns the school into a a, a war or, or a, a gulag and that sort of stuff, and that is not the case. I I carry the card. Um, I served my school, a private school. Um, the training was extensive. We didn't just do combat training. We did first. We went through background checks that would have qualified me to be an FBI agent. Uh, we did uh, defense, like uh, lockdown drills, of course, and medical emergencies, hand to hand. But we also did things like de-escalation and situational awareness, intruder, active shooters, all that sort of stuff. The training was very, very good. I've been to the police academy, and I would put it on a a par with that was a lot shorter than the 26 weeks at, at the academy, but it was very, very thorough, and it was very good. We have uh, at the school that I, I that I was with, we had an equal number of women as there were men who were dedicated, and I, that was one of the things that was very clear, that we are dedicating to give our lives to keep our kids safe. Yep. And if, yep. if you weren't willing to do that, and there was also a, an interview, a, a pretty probing interview, uh, to get a psychological profile. And a lot of the guys who are the people who had put their names in the hat to be part of the team did not make the team because they didn't do they didn't do well. No, they didn't. Do, let, let me let me throw this out at you, Tony, because I, I was talking to somebody last night uh, that has a lot of experience in this arena, and he is a big Second Amendment guy. And, you know, loyal listeners to the show can probably figure out who I'm talking about, but I'll let you do that. But okay. he, he said he said to me, he said, I, my concern is that it doesn't go far enough. And he presented something to me that was really, really intriguing. He said his concern was that it will be, in the real world, impossible for high school, let's say high school, okay, for yeah. high school kids not to figure out who the who the faculty members are that are 
that are packing, right? And he said, yeah, in, in there's order, there's a few surprises, but yeah. And and his concern then becomes that, um, that the school children, the the youngsters, can then um, figure out a way to possibly get their hands on the gun, or at very least, if they know and they're the ones that are committing the atrocity at the school, they'll know exactly who to go to first in order to in order to do the most damage. His idea was this. He said, why don't we just go all the way? And if we we all recognize that we have many people in our school systems that are ready, willing, and able to do what is necessary to protect those children, well, let, put them through the police academy and, 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 put them, and, and put them in a uniform and put the gun on their hip and have uniformed police as teachers and pay them 25 or 30 percent more to do it, and they become a, I mean, just uniform them like a police officer, like an SRO, except that they're teachers. I, I had not thought of this, but I don't have well, a lot of trouble with of, The other side of the coin on there is if, if they see a uniform, if there's a bad actor who sees a uniform, that's your first target. Well, I mean, that's true. That's true. Okay. You. And the, the way that, that uh, you set up a good security zone is that, they never get into the building. We have people who are outside the building all the time. A car comes in, they are greeted, and, you know, we get eyes on them. And can we help you? Welcome to our school. Mm -hmm. We're glad to take you. Who do you need to see? And it's it's a non-confrontational thing. It's a welcoming thing, but it is also shooters don't want to be identified. And if you get eyes on them and you lock eyes on them, a lot of times they'll get back in their car and go away. You, you you have it's it's like a, a three tier process to get into a school into into our school where you you are being interviewed essentially when you pull in and park in, in the parking lot there's someone there to greet you and what happened uh, at the Covenant School there was nobody there nobody and a lot of times they want to be the only person who has that power they're out on a, on a weird power trip. They want to be the only person who has power of life and death when they go through that door. The operative operation is to not ever let them get through that door. And it works. It works. I have seen two times in my uh, involvement with this, this sort of operation where a person just got back in their car. I don't know if they, if they were armed. I don't care. They got back in their car and they left because – they were greeted, they were identified, they were looked at. And then you have another set. We have a, um, a uh, Fourth Amendment commissioned officer at the front door, and then you have the faculty and staff who are armed. What, um, what's your response? You know, I'm getting a lot on the Super Text line, Members Nutrition Super Text line, 615-737-9986, Tony. They say... Run that spot, man. Run that spot. You know how it goes. They say... Uh, <laughs> I say, well, we already our schools already look too much like prisons. What do you say? Uh, well, if the building looks like a prison, that's that's the building designer. It's not us. Uh, we are trying to not look like tough guys standing in the corner with their arms folded. We are engaging, de-escalating, welcoming, and by that. By that de-escalation, by that welcoming, mm -hmm. we we are kind of doing a, a preliminary, uh, what, what would you call that? A, a preliminary winnowing process. Well, that's right. I mean, yeah, you, you you're not. It's not a hundred percent, but but you are narrowing the ability for an yeah. individual that wants to do harm to the children, their ability, their window of opportunity. You're making it as small as you possibly can, which I think is brilliant. Uh, Tony, thank you. I'm going to scoot to as many as I can get to. Call me back. I love that call. That is an informed individual that has some real-world experience. What do you think about my friend's idea? Why Why are we – I mean, I don't want to say that we're half pregnant here with this idea of concealed carry for faculty and staff that want it. Just, look, identify the teachers that want it. If we have a short – right? We are so, We are told we have a shortage of SROs. We have the funding for SROs, but we don't have enough SROs. 
well, why would we not then look to our teaching community, identify those individuals that want it, put them through the academy? Put them through the same training that police officers go through. And then put them back into schools in uniform. In a uniform. With a gun on their hip. Now, I understand Tony's response. Well, they become targets. Well, they do. They do. Sadly, that is the life of someone that takes on that responsibility. That you may, in certain circumstances, be a target. You have to keep your head on a swivel. Do you want safe schools or do you want dead kids? Do you want safe schools or do you want dead kids? Teresa's next in Nashville with a thought on all of this. And it says fixing the world, Teresa. So I'm leaning on you. Go right ahead and let's fix away. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for giving me the time. Of uh, course. To voice my opinion. I'm pulling this truck over. Um, I think what America needs is deep, deeper laws. America has got it too good and too easy. First off, we got all these thieves running around. If you get caught stealing, do like some of these other countries. Cut their hand off. All you got to do is make an example out of a few people. They're going to be like, oh, we're not going to do that. If you get caught committing murder, get home. Bottom line. The only way America is going to, and, and just like you were talking about guns in schools, if the parents would spare the rod at home and take care of that at home, parents, uh, teachers wouldn't have to. Then we wouldn't have, if you put guns in school, it's just going to make matters worse. The way I feel about it. Now everybody's carrying a gun. I drive a semi and we got truck drivers shooting each other over bottles of water being thrown at another truck. So can, can we explore that? I just want to explore what, something you just said just a little bit further. What, all right. I mean, every, everybody, we're not, no, no, I don't know if anyone is suggesting that everyone should have guns in schools. Right. Right. So only uh, right. what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide adequate, uh, and appropriate and consistent protection for young people. Uh, just explore that a little bit further. I'm not challenging you on it. I just want to explore yeah, no. your thought process. When yeah. you say, well, guns in schools won't solve anything, what do you mean? If we would take care of the other problems first, guns wouldn't have to be an issue, I feel like. You know, we, we, got, we got people coming across the borders. Okay, my opinion on that, come across the border, you're going to get dropped. Keep coming across the border, we're going to have a, we're going to have a bag limit. We'll, we'll just put you right back over the fence. Your family can come get you, whatever. We need to start just it just steeper, steeper, steeper. I mean, like I said, America has got it too easy. You know, you, you get caught out here selling drugs. You get a slap on the wrist, and then you're right back out there. No, you get caught selling drugs, automatic five years. You get caught bringing in drugs, trafficking automatic 10 or 20 or whatever it wouldn't take too many people to get that conviction what do you think other people's going to do they're going, i'm not going to do that man i you know they're going to think twice about it now you get a slap on the wrist and it's too easy to go right back out there and do what you're doing that's why nothing is ever being taken care of all I got to say is it's 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 a good it's a good thing I'm not in charge because a lot of this crap bottom line I put I put I would just straight put a stop to it. Biden's not going to. He don't even know where he's at. Well, him. I mean you you know you're you're touching a little bit on uh grander themes here Teresa. I'm glad you are and and I appreciate your call so much. Be safe on the roadways out there. I mean so a lot to unpack with Teresa's call. But she's touching on a, a larger theme about our democratic process. I've long discussed it. Alexander Teitler's cycle of democracy. We're somewhere along the cycle. I mean, you know, I don't know that we need to necessarily go back to the wild, wild west. But I, I agree with a lot of what you say. And a lot of what you say is it's almost inevitable. Here's the quote. 
It's commonly attributed to Alexander Teitler. Some people say that it wasn't him. A democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover they can vote themselves largest from the public treasury. From that moment on, a majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result being that a democracy always collapses over loose physical, physical policy, always followed by a dictatorship. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations from the beginning of history has been about 200 years. During those 200 years, these nations always progressed through the following sequence, from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, from dependence back into bondage. Where are we? We sure as hell are not toward the beginning, I'll tell you that. I would say we're somewhere between apathy, dependence. We're, we're somewhere in that range of apathy and dependence. But people are waking up. 615-737-9986. The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief located in Franklin. Want to see you. You hurting somewhere? Where you hurt? Where does it hurt you? I mean, if you are in physical pain in some form or fashion, if your back hurts, either lower or upper back, if your neck hurts, anywhere, if your knees hurt, your hips hurt, your elbows hurt, if the pain is in your joints or in your soft tissue, don't worry. They can handle that as well with their chiropractic care and their modern techniques to alleviate pain wherever it is originating. Everything that they do is about helping you alleviate pain without having to pop pills, without having to consider needles, and certainly without having to consider surgical options. That should be your last resort. At the Dr. Gill Center, they make sure that it is through incredible modern technologies like their Class 5 laser system, their red light therapy, and spinal decompression. They can assist you. They did me. I mean, they, they solved my upper neck problem. I don't have issues with my neck anymore. Thank you to the Dr. Gill Center. And my goodness gracious, my lower back doesn't hurt me at all. On most days, uh, it's very rare. And when it flares up, I've got the Dr. Gill Center at my fingertips. And I've got them on speed dial with my phone to schedule another appointment. You should schedule an appointment right now. Do this with me. 615-882-4838. 882-4838. It's the Dr. Gill Center for Back Neck and Chronic Pain Relief located in Franklin. Stop by tell them I sent you today.
I mean, does anybody really want to hear from... It's, um, it's Biden versus Trump. Yes, we know that. It what, is. Oh, it is. What do, you, what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah. Get over yourselves. Those are the two choices. That's what Hillary Rodham Clinton... You're a bunch of deplorables. Boy, that one that's a one bitter lady right there, boy. All right, we'll get more of your calls. That's it. That's all the Hillary you're going to get. No Hillary in the 2 o'clock hour. You will get some Mason and George and Rich and Lindsay and Jeff, all of you on the line. Hang in there right now. It's Mac Morris' turn in the news department. We'll be back for another hour of what I hope to be talk radio excellence on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Two oh one. I'm Mac Mori with your top story. Sixty eight degrees, cloudy today, and expecting rain, showers, possible thunderstorms here. Expecting thunderstorms. Severity chance is low. Weather forecast coming up two minutes. Today, the Environmental Protection Agency announcing a new rule affecting the water you drink. For the first time, the EPA is setting a national standard for the presence of forever chemicals called PFAS in drinking water. Perry Russum is in Washington. The chemicals come from things like fire suppressant foam that seeps into lakes and rivers. The Biden administration says the new rule on PFAS in water will reduce exposure for 100 million people. These forever chemicals have been linked to cancer and liver damage. EPA Administrator Michael Regan. Everyone should be able to turn on their tap and trust that the water that they're drinking and giving their children is safe. Water utility companies say the new rules could cost billions of dollars to follow and customers could pay more for water. And right now in Tennessee, a new poll shows how registered voters feel about the U.S. Senate and presidential races. The Beacon Center says it surveyed 1,197 registered voters and U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn and former President Trump hold commanding leads in their prospective races. Blackburn leads Knoxville Democrat State Rep Gloria Johnson by 16 percent. That's 4 percent lower since October, though. Trump leads President Biden in head-to-head -head by 25 percent, but it dips to 20 percent when independent Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is put in the mix. Governor Lee has 48 percent of Tennesseans approving his job performance, only 28 percent disapproving. That's the latest news. Weather forecast next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. The Tennessee Men's Clinic has two locations now to serve you. One has been around for over 10 years. Evan Bass started the Tennessee Men's Clinic right here in Nashville to help you, you men, or you women, if you have a guy that is low energy, low motivation, if you've noticed a decrease in their energy levels and you don't understand why. 
let's get checked out at the Tennessee Men's Clinic because they can walk you through uh, diagnosing what's going on with you. Did you know that it could be levels inside of your body that are naturally decreasing over time that we can uh, support through the Tennessee Men's Clinic, a variety of programs to do that. And in supporting some of the levels naturally occurring, you know, T levels and the like, naturally occurring within the body, they can get you back to that energy level, back to that motivation, back to that drive, and yes, back to that bedroom activity. And look, I understand that men wait on this. They don't want to address it. They don't want to face it in the mirror. But most men, when they go to the Tennessee Men's Clinic, most when they come out uh, with success, they say, I should have done it a year ago. I should have done it five years ago. TennesseeMensClinic.com for more information. TennesseeMensClinic.com. Or better yet, call and schedule an appointment for a, a, a visit to their Midtown location or out in Cool Springs. Uh, the telephone number is 615-208-9090. 208-9090. Tennessee Men's Clinic. All right, many, 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 many of you are uh, responding to two things that happened right at the end of the last hour of the show. And so let's clean a few things up and we'll get back to your telephone calls. It's the Murphy Show, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. The biggest two questions I got from the end of the hour, last hour. Bell, you want to guess what one of them was? It was not really a question. It was a, a, a criticism. Have you looked at the super text line at all? I have not. I've kind of been focused on other things. You've so, been busy. Yeah. I know you're busy in there. Uh, one, uh, people want to know that quote, who said it. They want to look it up. It's Alexander Teitler is traditionally um, credited with the quote that I read you about the cycle of democracy. Just look up Alexander Teitler, spell Teitler, T-Y-T-L-E-R, and you'll get it. Borch used to talk about that, but he never attributed the quote. There's always there's there's a little bit of question as to whether or not it was him, but for the most part, it is attributed to him. So you can find it that way, and it is it, it is a truth uh, that we find in these democracies. And frankly, uh, and I'm using democracy grand grand scope here: democracy, direct democracy, indirect democracy. We are democracy. We're a version of it. We're an indirect democracy called a representative or a constitutional republic. Anyway, that said, um, you're right. Bortz did utilize it and. He focused on the fact that we're past the life cycle, man. We're we're like, we are blessed to be here. We're like John Henry. Before I lost John Henry earlier this year, I was blessed to have him for 13 years. That's three years longer than his life cycle. That's three years longer than we should have expected to have it. Above Sad average. It's above average. And sadly, the United States of America has existed beyond the natural cycle of things. And we can continue that existence, but we must do so in a concerted effort. With a concerted effort, we've got to do so through conscious, con it was always a difficult word for me to say, conscious, conscious, conscious thought. Number hey, two. This just showed up on my Twitter. I, 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 the House has blocked the reauthorization of FISA. That's great. That's huge. That's fabulous. That just happened? Yeah. That's good news. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's like... No, that's important. Now stuff. the NSA can kiss our ass. <laughs> well, I think, uh, Bill, I, I think the FCC still has some say about what we could say or not say on the radio, buddy. Come hey, on. that is not one of the seven dirty words. Uh, that is true. I know them all. You want me to list them all for you? Happy to do so. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Troublemaker. Um, no, that's good news. I'll have to absorb some of that. The other one was uh, people want to know where the quote comes from. That's Alexander Teitler, T-Y-T-L-E-R. And the other, uh, there are a lot of complaints on the Members Nutrition Super Text Line that I referred to Hillary Clinton as a lady. <laughs> that's, that's, look, look, I don't make mistakes. Can can I get my Murphy was right? Can I can I can I get my Murphy was right, please? My because I don't mistakes. I don't make mistakes very often, but. Uh, Murphy was wrong. Murphy was wrong. She's no lady. Matt, with all due respect, please do not call Hillary Clinton a lady. That's from 8397. 7361, I would not call Hillary Clinton a lady. Brian, news alert. Hillary is like Grand Moff Tarkin in the original Star Wars. Retreat, now's our moment of uh, triumph. Also, not a lady. 8870. 
Uh, no, that's a different one. You know, I'm getting a lot of Hillary's no lady. My apologies. My sincerest apologies. When I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. All right, 210, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. No Cameron Smith today. Cameron will be in for me Friday. I'm out Friday, so tomorrow is my Friday. That means tomorrow is First Amendment Freestyle Friday on Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday on Thursday. And tomorrow is Friday Mac Attack on Thursday. All of those things happening tomorrow on the big show. Right now, let's get back to, uh, I believe this is Brandon on the line. Hey, Brandon, how are you, buddy? Doing great. How are you doing? Thanks oh, for having me. Oh, is this my friend Brandon Ogles? Uh, yes, sir. How's things going, man? Hey, going well. Just Good. wanted to call in. I heard you talking about school safety. Uh, yes, sir. Got, saying some smart stuff, just calling in, talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. What's on your mind? Well, I, you hit on something earlier that I really liked. I wanted to just kind of give you kudos about. I'm not sure who you were talking to, but what you were talking about, the teachers making them all SROs, we actually, that was one of my amendments to the last time this bill was introduced. Um, and simply because, I mean, something to think about to your to your listeners and just kind of roll around, there, there are some issues about retention of the firearm and having like a level three holster as well as possibly less than lethal options. Um, and then the training, of course, the training that goes on the coordination between um, those teachers that will be able to carry and local law enforcement, as well as the first responders that will show up on an active shooter. So that was that was actually my amendment uh, to the previous piece of legislation, basically saying if you want to go armed, believe in the Constitution. I don't have a problem with that, but let's give you the same level of training that we give our SROs and just make you part of the team. I mean, wh why not? What's the what's the pushback? It it feels like we're just we're jumping ahead to where we're naturally going. That's what it feels to me like. I hope we're going that route. I mean, I I hope because just just the time I spent my you know my dad was a cop, my grandfather was a cop. I did five years uh, volunteer in Williamson County under our commissioner of safety Jeff Long. Uh, Having that duty belt and having those other options, having either that that mace uh, and having those cups, uh, you know, my my son's 15 and I went out and worked out with him yesterday. You you've got freshmen and eighth graders that are as big and strong as full grown men uh, in these schools, and, and I would hate to think that there's going to be a time that you know a young person's upset. Uh, you know, fighting with teachers has been going on. For as long as, you know, for a long time. I'm not saying it's right, and by no means it's not. But to introduce a firearm, we just need to be sure there's precautions that are taken. Uh, and I really like the level three holster um, as far as the, the carrying, just to be sure that firearm's secured. But I'll stop talking for a minute. Well, no, Brandon, no, my, the big the debate that I'm having with myself more than anything is what is the most effective route? Um, I, I dismiss some of our friends on the left side of this that refuse to consider whether or not we ought to have more people in our school systems armed. Gun-free zones are a failure. Uh, announcing that to potential criminals or perpetrators, it's an absolute failure. Uh, we, need, we need an ability to fight back. And I think most reasonable people who believe in our Constitution of the United States understands that. How best to address that is still an open question. And so my question for me now is, do I, want, do I want instructors or faculty members that are properly trained to have concealed carry, or do I want them to have open carry? And which would be best as a potential preventative, uh, which would be best uh, to the safety of the students? And, and, you know, that's kind of where I'm at debating it in my mind right now. Well, and I think that's the healthy debate to have, which you would – which. You know, I feel like the ship has sailed on the debate on whether or not we're going to have them. And that was, you know, that was my frustration in, you know, 2018 that led me to run for politics is for people to st stand up and say, you know, we don't want firearms in our school. Well, it, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need those. But we, we know the world we're living in. It, it's not a it, it's a necessity at this point. And it's a it's a constitutional right. So. I think the debate is over as far as that's concerned. It's, you know, you hit on it. It's just what does that look like going forward? Um, 
Um, and, you know, the, the, the positives to having the teachers, I think, identified with some types of a uniform is, is when those first responders enter the building. Uh, so you don't get into a fr- friendly fire incident. Um, that's, that's kind of where I was when, you know, the last time this bill was discussed. But I will, I will, I would imagine the fact that this is coming over from the Senate back to the House, Department of Safety, uh, Jeff Long, Commissioner, the Governor are going to weigh in real heavily. Uh, and I would be very surprised if you didn't see some amendments filed in the legislation when it came back over to the House. Um, I wouldn't be surprised either. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, think, Brandon, great think, stuff. Great, uh, great stuff. Call yeah. me back. Uh, Brandon Ogles. Yes, uh, how's everything going with you? Oh, everything's great. I'm just doing what politicians do when they retire. Listen to 99.7 and <laughs> still drafting legislation. Oh, I do want to plug uh, while I'm on here, Chris Todd and Bailey. A piece of legislation that I previously passed in the House that was mandatory firearm training in K-12, through uh, they both just passed in both chambers. It's going to the governor's uh, desk, and that's simply going to let our safety officers train our young people to identify firearms, uh, not to touch them, and to get an adult. Uh, back to the debate of this ignorance that we've been trying to push where we would never talk about guns and schools. Uh, you know, that's stopping finally. And we're going to identify those and give young people some tools to, to be safer around firearms going forward. So, uh, Bailey and Chris Todd did, did a great job with that legislation. Glad that's going to the governor's desk. Brandon, thanks a lot. And by the way, do, is, is my memory serving me correctly? Or have you, have you, I know you decided to run in the seventh when Mark announced he wasn't, but now that he's back in, you're out. Is that right? Oh yeah, I'm out. Yeah, yeah that's that what was I never never intentions to run against Mark. Yeah, that's that what I figured. Run for an run for an open seat. Mark's a good guy. Great, doing a great job. We need him as chairman of Homeland. Um, you know, God willing, Trump gets reelected, and there's going to be some great things happen for Mark. Do you, did you? Be, hey, by the way, did you tell? Did have you talked to Green? You Green ought to owe you a dinner or something because you know you you had all that heartburn. You had to consider getting back into politics. I mean, that's awful, even to consider it. But oh you're, yeah, you're we, good we, had, we had more than we had more than heartburn. We spent a lot of money gearing <laughs> up. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're negotiating for. We're negotiating for much more than a steak dinner at this point. Uh, talk to the Trump people, and, uh, yeah, we're yeah. all on the same team. I love it. But uh, I'm not going to hit him too bad about those. those well, those well, I get it. Brandon, yeah. great to hear from you. Yes. Thank you for calling in. Sorry, that was a premature call or rejection there, Brandon. My bad. Brandon Ogles, you know, who is a former Tennessee state representative, for those who don't know, and briefly threw his hat in the ring in the 7th District after Mark decided that he wasn't running. That was directly following our interview with Mark. A lot of people blaming me for that decision. Um, that's fine. I'll take that blame. It is 218, Super Talk 99.7 WT. And I think I have time for one more. By the way, before I get to one more call, uh, Bell made the uh, comment right on right on the mark that, uh, that the House has voted down an extension of FISA. We're going to have more on that in a moment. Number two, breaking news out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania as Philadelphia police are responding to a shooting in a large gathering of people. It is believed to have been a large crowd of individuals celebrating the end of Ramadan. Uh, That happening now, Philadelphia police responding to that, and that is a breaking news story at 2.18 this afternoon, Central Time, 3.18 Eastern Time in Philadelphia, PA. Philadelphia has some pretty stringent gun control laws, it's my understanding, in their city. Uh, Yet guns have erupted and violence has erupted as a large gathering of people there has ended in violence. More on that when we find out more on Super Talk 99.7 WT, and it's 219 on Super Talk. All right, so you, uh, you want to take care of yourself, right? You obviously uh, want to you know, get the vitamins and the supplements that are right for you. If I told you that I could keep you away from, you know, medically prescribed medication, like, you know, doctor prescribed medication, you'd probably want to do that too. I am a big believer uh, that we, that God Almighty and on God's green earth, we have been given those things that can certainly in a preventative way protect us 
against ailment or injury or whatnot. And and I believe that there are a lot of vitamins and supplements out there uh, that we need in our lives. And I think Members Nutrition is the place to get it. MembersNutrition.com for more information. That's MembersNutrition.com. I've gone there uh, and I've uh, I've shopped and I encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, when you go to Members Nutrition, you're going to get uh, uh, the great deals that are available to everybody. You don't have to be, you know, no special codes or whatnot. These deals are are available to you on MembersNutrition.com. And they cast a wide net in terms of what they do from a vitamin and supplement standpoint. But here's what they don't do. They don't make everything overseas and ship it over here. They make it right here in the USA. That's important to me. Secondarily, they charge you less than the big box stores. They believe that vitamins and supplements are overpriced. Number three, they're going to provide you the tools uh, in your arsenal to be the healthiest you possible, whether it's daily defense and their youthful cleanse, whether it's energy supplements, men's or women's health, whatever you need, they've got it for you at membersnutrition.com. So go over to the website, membersnutrition.com. Tell them that Matt Murphy or any of the team sent you from Super Talk. I appreciate you doing so. Membersnutrition.com for great deals on your vitamins and supplements. Membersnutrition.com. A shooting in Philadelphia it was near an event in the city marking the end of Ramadan, a religious event. It's unconfirmed that the shooting's directly connected to that. We're going to have updates right here, 2.30 Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. Thank you much, Mr. Mori. Mac Mori back in the newsroom gathering headlines and monitoring that situation in Philadelphia, as he just mentioned. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on there. It's 2.24 Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. I've never noticed this before, but Emory has now pointed it out, Bell. We don't have a uh, we don't have a cars for kids commercial anytime soon, do we? Uh, let me look here. I mean, uh, typically I would assume that we do. Usually we do, especially towards the end of the show. I mean, look, but- I I'm on record as saying I like the commercial. I'm the one that apparently likes the commercial. Everybody look, talks about the commercial. You can complain about that commercial all you want to, but it does its job very well. There's no question that it does its job because people remember it, whether they remember it for good things or bad things. They certainly remember it, and that's what advertising is all about. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not seeing one in the last hour here. Well, but Emory says, Matt, it's like this. As far as that bleeping Cars for Kids commercial goes, 
it's that little tap tap symbol intro that's the worst it's like a gastrocentrologist ringing a bell right before a colonoscopy dreaded anticipation pavlov's invasion <laughs> it's tap 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 boom commercial insertion <laughs> that's actually brilliant that's good and what was uh and who I, said and that I, I think i know emory that's emory good job emory that's our good friend emory emory's a one eight. yeah I, I get it it's like oh my oh no what ah before you know it it's all uh, on a you commercial's job is to make you remember the product or service it's exactly and what i'm cars telling for kids you does, you man. do not forget cars for kids and i do not i don't it doesn't grate my ever-loving nerve like it does some. I sing along. One eight seven seven cars for kids. N A R A cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Yeah, that's exactly right. There you go. I like it. There's a little, uh, little more, little Maureen Murphy on your Wednesday afternoon on Super Talk ninety nine. That Maureen Murphy. That would I like be uh, that. Mur Morian Murphy would be a good name for a funeral home. Not necessarily a good name for a band, but a good name <laughs> for a funeral. We could combine. Welcome to Morian Murphy, where we attend to all of your grieving needs. Thank you. Are you looking to garden your loss? <laughs> I'm in favor of that. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, let me just get off on a... I don't mean to put my rand pants on here, but... I don't understand all of you people that are coming at me for my support of compostable humans. What's wrong with that? I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. And and frankly, I think you're thinking about it wrong from a historical standpoint if you think that we originally segmented cities of the dead that we called graveyards or cemeteries for them. We didn't do it to honor them. We did it for us so that we didn't get sick. Anyway, rant rant over. 227 Super Talk 997 WTN. Coming up right after the bottom of the hour news with Mac Morey. We'll continue to take your telephone calls on a variety of very serious topics. We'll continue to monitor Philadelphia. And I'll also quiz Bell and Mac on the uh, most popular baby names in the state of Tennessee last year. That's all to come on Super Talk 997. Death with dignity. It's Morey and Murphy at Eminem. Oh, no. Somebody made a. We melt in your mouth, not in your hands. What is that, Tony? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, what? What? I don't. <laughs> I think there's a joke there, but I don't. I don't. I need to pre-read these before I go on the Members Nutrition Super Text line. It's Maury and Murphy's funeral home. People are dying to get in. <laughs> Maury and Murphy's funeral home. We allow you a last moment with your loved ones. We bring them to the phone, dead or alive. No. No, <laughs> when I die, I just want somebody to chuck me out a car window doing ninety, and wherever I land is where I land. Look, I the the whole compostable thing. I I kind of dig it. It's like a different version of ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I mean, we always focus on the ashes. We don't focus on the dust. Uh, cremation's okay, but composting's not. Come on, man. Let's yes. grow some. Let's grow some maters. Yes, thirty six eighteen. He's very very much a swelling green guy. Yes, I don't mind. No, I mean, look, I mean, got got to eat, right? Got to eat. Want to live? Got to eat. Soil and greens here. Hey, look, when it comes to all this climate change stuff anyway, we're going to end up there, so why not just jump ahead? I mean, let, let's let just get ahead of it. We get ahead of a little bit, we can we can come up with some good good meals. Something better than the little, the little cake that Charleston Heston had to eat. It's 229 Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Real quick, uh, Lindsay, you're next in Pleasant Hill. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Hey, Matt. Uh, Wait a minute. Is it Pleasant Hill or Pleasant Shade, Lindsay? Do you change? It's Pleasant Shade, y'all. <laughs> no, I, I, every time she calls in, it's a different Pleasant. It's a bit, she it's moves a, a lot. I know, but Pleasant I like to Hill, mess with me, Pleasant man. Shade, Pleasant Valley, Pleasant Acres, right. Pleasant Ridge. It's my favorite bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. I just, I was today old when I learned the bit. I, I've just been so made it great. <laughs> anyway, Lindsay, what's on your mind? I wanted to tell you that I think they should put guns in every last one of the trained teachers' hands, and they should put signs. If they've even got one SRO, they should put signs in. If they have a spoon ladle, they should put signs everywhere. It's proven to work. 
And I've got this guy on the S&M guys making this big point about um, that's not their chosen profession. If they, they wanted to be teachers. Well, guess what? I used to deliver pizzas, and I didn't choose to be a cop, but my butt was armed. Do you think these convenience store guys want to, you know, they maybe they want to save their own life, even though they didn't have a cop as their chosen profession? And if I hear one more person talk about how much this is going to cost, I am going to throw something. There are wackos slaughtering our children, and we're sending money to Ukraine. I don't want to hear another thing about a penny. Now I'm done. Love it. Love it, Lindsay. That's pithy. I love that. That's good. It's 2.30. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Time for the news. Two thirty. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories right now. Sixty eight degrees in Nashville. Cloudy, a bit rainy. Expecting storms later on this afternoon into the evening. Weather forecast on the way. Right now in Philadelphia, multiple people have been shot after a shooting near an event in the city, marking the end of Ramadan. It's unconfirmed if the shooting's connected to that event. Officials have made multiple arrests. At least four guns were recovered. At least one Philadelphia police officer fired their weapon. Now law enforcement conducting what's called a line search throughout the area, carefully looking at every blade of gla gla grass to find any evidence or abnormalities. Right now, back in Tennessee, a fatal crash shut down portions of I-24 this morning at around 2.30 a.m. It happened near the Harding pl Place exit. 19-year-old Kavanta Lane was killed in that crash. Surveillance footage shows two people coming to Lane's car after it came to rest in a parking lot before leaving that scene. Police said Lane was not wearing his seatbelt. Preliminary investigation shows speed and failure to maintain the lane of travel are potential factors of the crash. And a group of parents in Littleton, Colorado, say they're preparing to sue after their autistic children were allegedly abused by a bus aide who was there to help them get to school. Here's Alex Stone reporting. Ten-year-old Dax is among the nonverbal autistic children allegedly punched, slapped, and jabbed by 29-year-old bus aide Kiara Jones. Dax's dad overcome by emotion. My sweet and loving son. Dax's mother. The torture. Jones has been charged with assault against an at-risk person. She was caught on surveillance video allegedly abusing a student. Now the families of three children are getting ready to sue Littleton Schools. Their attorney. These children have been traumatized. And that is the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. The Glock store is located just off of Elm Hill Pike on Air Lane Drive, convenient to anywhere within the sound of my voice, minutes away from the airport. Let me tell you something, friends. Go to the Glock store and you'll understand why I say they're the biggest, they're the brightest, they're the best. The retail side of things is unmatched. They have, I mean, if you call yourself the Glock store, you're going to have Glocks. They have gunsmiths uh, to help uh, customize your Glock. If you already own a gun and you want to do some customization, you can do it at the Glock store. They also have custom guns that they have prepared especially for you. Uh, just go see them online at GlockStore.com or in person on Airlane Drive. Now, of course, uh, they have their shooting rooms, never lanes, shooting rooms, and they're training professionals that can help you get more proficient in how you use your firearm. They can do that by a sign up. Shoot270.com is the place to go. Shoot270.com. So whether it's Shoot270.com or Glockstore.com, go there. And remember, write this date down, June 1st. That is the date of the big fourth annual Glockstore Open House Thousands and thousands, literally tens of thousands of uh, dollars worth of prizes. Give it away in that big event from 10 until 2, and you'll see yours truly along with Dan Mandis and Chris Hand. It's the Glock Store, theglockstore.com, or, or I should say glockstore.com. No, the glockstore.com or shoot270.com.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. So many of you on the phones will jump on there momentarily talking about school safety, school choice, cars for kids, a lot of things going on. Michael in Chattanooga wants to talk about composting bodies. I, I, under, I understand that there's uh, certain difficulties in composting the human body. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that we should use it for our gardens. Uh, that's just the phraseology that they used. In the meantime, Mac Moore is back in the newsroom. You got something, Mac Moore? Yeah, just an update on that Philadelphia shooting that we're tracking. It was it was near an event uh, marking the end of Ramadan. These ne- these next three days are marking the end of that celebration. Then, and uh, we're hearing right now from officials that that was uh, not related to that event, and it was not an act of terrorism related to Hamas. Rather, criminal activity, uh, more than likely a dispute between two parties. Okay, very good. You keep us up to date. Also, yeah. uh, while we're updating things, yep. any any. Uh, any update on why the ship lost power there, Mac Mori? I know you're the ship, you know, the Baltimore ship ran into the uh, oh. bridge, kablooey. <laughs> yeah, any any update on that? No. Uh, I get crickets on that. Okay. Well, I'm well, I, I guess I, I'm I'm happy and I'm sad. I'm sad that there's violence, but it seems to be more of a traditional Philadelphia type nature in terms of, you know, interactions between criminal elements gone bad as opposed to something of a religious perspective. So Mm -hmm. uh, that is, I I guess one can take that as good news still. Hopefully uh, people injured, multiple people injured. Hopefully nobody killed uh, in that situation. Um, I tell you what, I I just, I don't know what to do. Sometimes I don't know what to do. I, I have this delicious Sheila Jackson Lee audio to share with you. Have you heard this? I did not play this yesterday because I thought it was fake. I was concerned that it was AI. Oh, gosh. That's how bad it is. This is from her during the eclipse. She is addressing a group of, I think, high school students at Booker T. Washington High School Monday to talk about the historic nature of the eclipse. This is an elected representative who represents tens of thousands of people in Texas. In the direction smaller than the sun, uh, and the sun went in a direction, and then the earth. Now those provide unique light and energy so that you have the energy of the moon at night, and sometimes you've heard the word. The energy of why, the, why can you not just trust the science, Matt? The energy of the moon at night. Why do you refuse to trust the science, Matt? What, what energy is she talking about? That <laughs> now those provide unique light and energy, so that you have the energy of the moon at night. <laughs> and sometimes you've heard the word full moon. And sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see. A full moon is that complete rounded circle, oh, that's nice. which is made up mostly of gases. And that's why the question, the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? <laughs> you know what? NASA still it has is- has all those moon gases that we brought back from uh, the Apollo missions. I, I saw I saw this yesterday. Somebody clipped it out and put music behind it put the curb your enthusiasm music behind da, 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 da. and i i was so worried about it being artificial intelligence i didn't share it yesterday i had it yesterday i didn't share it i had to go fact check it last night to fact check that this was real this woman this woman is an elected official whoever voted for her ought to be ashamed of themselves did you see uh kamala's response to this i did not Here, let me play it for you Fact check true. Made up mostly of gases. And that's why the question the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? Are the gases such that we could do that? What? What is wrong? The sun is a mighty powerful heat. <laughs> it is almost <laughs> That sun is a mighty powerful heat. My grandpa used to say that. <laughs> Impossible to go near the sun. It's not. So if in case anybody's wondering, it's impossible to go near the sun. The moon is more manageable. Yeah. It's, and you will see uh, in a moment, or not a moment, you'll see in a couple of years that NASA is going back to the moon mm-hmm. with human beings. 
Oh, Anybody yeah. heard of that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I know there's some humorously saying so, but we will, we are working now in the Artemis Project to take human beings, astronauts, to land on the moon. I don't think we've been on the moon in the last 50 years, so we will be landing on the moon. What you will see... Fact check, true. ...today will be the closest distance that the moon has ever been in the last 20 years. Which hmm. What? 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 Which means that's why they will shut the light down because they will be close to the earth, which is an amazing experience and what we are supposed to experience, and I'm hoping we can, complete darkness. That everything will be shut out. Now, we don't have any animals around here to be able to, um, maybe we'll hear some dogs barking, uh, what, how they are impacted. But you will be able to tell because there will be complete darkness. You have the legitimate glasses, do you not? All right, we want to make sure that no one tries to be cute and look up without anything on, on their eyes. Please don't think that's a joke because will, we will be walking you out of here and we'll be holding your arm to get you out of here because you won't be able to uh, walk yourself out. Do you understand what I'm saying? This uh, yeah, I do understand what you're saying. There's a little bit of Sheila Jackson leave for a little bit of comic relief. Uh, we could go on. There's 10 more minutes of it. There's 10 more minutes of her babbling about the moon being gas and the moon putting off energy and, you know, anything else under the sun. It's just, once again, I held, it's so bad I held it because I thought it was fake. That's how bad it is. George is in Smyrna with a thought on school choice as we continue on the Murphy Show. Hello, George. Hello. Hello, friend. I'm so happy I got to say something. I'm, as far as school choice goes, I'm all for teachers with guns in the schools. I don't think, I'm not really certain that they need to be wearing uniforms. Maybe an emblem on their shirt or something of that nature, but... I don't. I think uniforms might be kind of a target. So the, the more incognito they can be, the better. You, you put some teachers in there that are armed. You get a nice big sign that you stick outside. Uh, teachers are armed in this school. Something of that nature. And then you get those guys who I were talking earlier about doing the uh, intervention. And I think that would solve the problem completely. I love it, George. I, uh, you know what? I could be talked into either way. Either you conceal carry with school teachers or you open carry with school teachers. I see arguments and benefits on both sides. I do not see the argument for preventing uh, moving forward with this legislation. I think it's very important for the safety of our kids. John has a thought in Gallatin. Hey, John, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. I would like to go on record as saying that I don't think that uh, the representative in Texas should be able to procreate. <laughs> and uh, and I think that uh, Linda down there in Pleasant Shade is my kind of lady. I love you, Linda. And I, I totally agree with the, with, the, uh, with the law that we hold these parents of these shooters accountable. I think it's a great thing. I think we should step it up a notch and start holding some of these judges and attorneys, these uh, these uh, prosecutors and things, uh, uh, they should start serving a little bit of time. When you, when you turn the news on every morning and you've got this dirtbag out there that's fired shots into a house, he's got a doggone arrest list that's a mile long. There's where your problem is. It would It would bleed over into the school's and prevent shootings and things like that. If we took care of these scumbags out here that have two mile long arrest uh, bookings or whatever, I can't remember what you call it, but that, that is just stupid. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you, John. You're, you're, we, we, we need to start sending some of these judges. If we're going to send some parents to, to jail because of some of these little uh, dirtbags going out and shooting people up, let's start sending some of these judges 
the jail with the with the dirt bags. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't know that we're going to start uh, criminalizing their interpretation of the law, but I would agree with you that if they are elected, we need to be better about electing the proper judges. Uh, district attorneys are a different animal altogether. Sadly, George Soros and his ilk have figured out how to infiltrate our our justice system through the appointment or hiring or election of these ridiculous DAs that don't seem to have any respect for the law and don't seem to have any respect for the average folks that are just trying to live their lives. Uh, great call and great comment. A lot more of you that we'll, then we'll be able to get to on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. 4269 on the Members Nutrition Super Text Line says the earth is flat, people. Let's, let's get this right. I really wanted a flat earther during the eclipse day, and I did not get it. I'm frustrated by that. Uh, more to come with Brian Wilson. He's coming up with The Drive, and we'll find out what's going on with him next on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Winding down another edition of the Matt Murphy Show. It's our Friday show tomorrow. I'm not here Friday. Cameron Smith in for me on Friday. Man, oh, man, a lot going on. So much we've not gotten to. Inflationary rates. Oh, you know rates. what that means? What does that mean? You don't don't stop. No, don't do it. Don't. Don't. I, I'm about to talk to Brian Wilson. Don't you do it. <sighs> no. Shouldn't have mentioned anything. Uh, we've got uh, the inflationary rates uh, that were announced earlier today. Joe Biden finally making an appearance in the Rose Garden earlier today. I'm certain that some of these subjects will be covered on the drive with Brian Wilson. He joins us now to talk about said same. How are you, sir? I'm well. You know, when you ask people what do they care about in this election cycle, they say number one is immigration. Number two is the economy. Well, I have uh, big stories on both of those. I mean, the news that came out today about the inflation rate, if Joe Biden was hoping that things were about to turn a corner as he in a time when he really needed it to turn the corner, he was disabused of that notion today by the inflation number, which came in a lot hotter than expected. And so I'll be talking about that and looking back at, at how much more things cost you today than they did when Joe Biden took the oath mm. of office. Well, you, you know the old phrase that it was called the pottery barn rule, right? You break it, you buy it. Right. And and for me, the Biden administration calculated some six to eight months ago, and you well know this, Brian, and not, my time frame might be a little off, but they calculated the economy would be getting better. So they decided to label it Bidenomics. Right. And, and because they thought if it did turn better that they would get – then get the opportunity to take credit for it. Well, you don't it hear that term being used very much right now. I can assure <laughs> you, you sure, that. Yeah. You surely do not. But they, I, I say they labeled it. They own it, right? Now, that's right. And, and you, know, that, um, you call it what it is. Yes, Bidenomics. You want to own that? That's fine. I mean, really, when you look at this election, the issues that really matter to people, almost all of them, Trump does better than Biden. I'm on the economy, on who can govern better, uh, on uh, immigration, on foreign policy. I mean, just every step of the way. Uh, Trump, you know, tr uh, beats Biden on all of these issues. The only one that that is going to be a problem, I think, uh, in some re regards. And you talked about this so uh, gracefully the other day, uh, and that's the issue of abortion, which right. the Democrats are going to hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer. But you know what? When you look at 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 uh, at where that falls and the things that people care about, it's way down the list. Well, and I beg my friends, and, and I've heard you say as much in different ways too, Brian. I just beg folks to look at it from a larger perspective. Look at it from a period of 10 years or 15 years as opposed to the last couple of years. And I think you'll see some of the incredible gains we've made, mm -hmm. made for those of us who believe that we need to default to life on that front. Anything else we need to know about before we go? Well, we'll have uh, the 2024 election update, and Pete Hegseth will join us. You know, he's a, he joins me every Wednesday when he's available, and he'll be joining us at uh, 435 today. And uh, always enjoy my conversations with Pete. It is always a pleasure to hear from him, and it's always a pleasure to listen to The Drive on Super Talk 99.7 WTN with Brian Wilson. That's coming up next right after Mac Morey's newscast, which is coming up right now on Super Talk. We'll be back tomorrow for a First Amendment Freestyle Friday on Thursday. Until then, have a wonderful afternoon, folks. Hug your loved ones. Talk to you tomorrow. So long.